Welcome to part three of our unit on Hebrew poetry and songs. أهلا بكم في الجزء الثالث محاضرة الثالثة من حدثنا عن الشعر العبري وسفر مزامير. I'm David. Raga will be translating, and will be presenting the insightful curriculum developed and originally presented by Phil Lees. أنا ديفيد وراجع هتكون بترجم لي وهنقدم لكم المحاضرات اللي هو كتبها وحضرها في الليج. And Phil works with youth with a mission through the King's Lodge in Warwickshire, England. وفيل بي بيخدم مع هاي الشباب اللي هو رسالة في في إنجلترا في مركز اسمه King's Lodge. We are continuing to study Hebrew poetry and the Psalms. إحنا بنكمل مع بعض دراستنا في الشعر العبري والمزامير. In this part, we want to particularly look at the element of Hebrew poetry known as semantic parallelism. في المحاضرة دي هنركز مع بعض عن حاجة في الشعر العبري اسمها التوازي اللفظي. We'll begin explaining that in a few moments. وهنشرح ليكو أكتر إيه معنى الكلام ده. But first, let's just give an overview. أول حاجة هنبص نظرة سريعة عن الموضوع. For much of church history, Hebrew poetry in the Old Testament was not identified or recognized. في معظم التاريخ بتاع الكنيسة كان الشعر العبري غير معروف وغير مدرك من المسيحيين في الوقت دوت. If you look at the King James version of the Bible, لو بصينا على الترجمة الإنجليزية اللي اسمها King James, which was the authorized English translation of the Bible for many years, وهي كانت الترجمة المعترفة في اللغة الإنجليزية لسنين طويلة. You'll find that the Old Testament does not identify Hebrew poetry. بنشوف إن العهد القديم مش مكتوب بشكل محطوط ومرصوص كشكل شعري. Hebrew poetry and prose are presented the same. الحقيقة بنلاقي إنه الشعر العبري والنثر متقدمين بنفس الشكل. وكمان عندنا إحنا نفس الحكاية لغاية دلوقتي في ترجمة الفان دايك في العربي. However, in the more recent translations, لكن في الترجمات الأحدث في اللغة الإنجليزية The poetry is recognized and you'll notice that for the poetry the layout is different. بنشوف وهما بيكتبوا الكلام المقدس بيترجموه بدأوا يدركوا إنه لا الشعر دي طريقة كتابة مختلفة فبنلاقي في اختلاف في الكتابة ما بين شكل النثر وشكل الشعر. What made this difference is that in 1753 واللي خلى الأمر ده مختلف إن هو سنة 1753 بيشوب روبرت لوث brought this to the attention of the church. الأسقف روبرت لوث جاب الموضوع دوت وبدأ يخلي الكنيسة تنتبه إلى الموضوع ده. Through his studies, he understood something called semantic parallelism. وهو بيدرس الشعر العبري أو الكلام المقدس بدأ يدرك إن في ثلاث أنواع مختلفة من التوازي اللفظي. This can be identified by what he called Correspondence and equality between parts of the sentence. وهو بيحدد ده بيعرفه بحاجة اسمها تطابق وتساوي بين أجزاء الجملة. So semantic parallelism was his focus. فبدأ يركز على التوازي اللفظي. And he identified three different types of semantic parallelism. هو اكتشف إن في ثلاث أنواع من التوازي اللفظي. The first one we'll discuss is synonymous parallelism. أول حاجة اسمه التوازي المتشابه. This is when the second line of a poetic verse repeats the thought of the first line. ده لما بيكون الشطر الثاني من في من البيت الشعري بيكرر الفكرة الموجودة في الشطر الأول بس بكلمات مختلفة. But it's only in different words. لكن بيغير الكلمات. So for Hebrew poetry, it's not so much rhyme and meter. والحقيقة في الشعر العبري الشعر ما هوش عبارة عن قافية أو وزن But rather what we would call thought rhyme لكن حاجة اسمها فكرة واللي هي الأبيات الفكرة This is identified with both couplets and triplets وفي فكرة أبياتها ثنائية وفكرة أبياتها ثلاثية But mostly couplets as you'll see معظم الشعر العبري هو عبارة عن أبيات ثنائية Let's give an example of synonymous parallelism. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims his handiwork. 
What we want you to notice is that the second line is a repeat of the first line. Only using different words. So the heavens parallels his firmament. It's the same idea but in different words. Our telling parallels proclaims. And the glory of God parallels his handiwork. So in this verse, we see a good example of synonymous parallelism. The second line repeats the thought of the first line. Only in different words. Let's have some other examples. Psalm 114 is a good example of synonymous parallelism. In fact, the whole psalm of Psalm 114 is a synonymous verse. So we see verse 1. When Israel went out from Egypt, and the خروج إسرائيل من مصر, line the house of Jacob from a people of strange language. وصدر ثاني وبيت يعقوب من شعب ااا شعب أعجم. Judah became his sanctuary. كان يهوذا مقدسه. Israel his dominion. وإسرائيل محل سلطان. His sanctuary also has a parallel in his dominion. So we see beautifully balanced synonymous parallelism. The same is true of verses 3 and 4. The sea looked and fled. البحر رأه فهرب. Jordan turned back. الأردن رجع إلى خلفه. The mountains skipped like rams. الجبال قفزت مثل الكباش. The hills like lambs. والأكام مثل حملان الغنم. Here we see in blue the sea. هنا بنشوف باللون الأزرق البحر. Parallels Jordan. بيوازي الأردن. Looked and fled in red. رأه فهرب بال Parallels turned back. بيوازي رجع إلى خلفه. Four the mountains. فعدد أربعة الجبال. Parallels the hills. بتوازي الأكام. Skipped like rams. قفزت مثل الكباش. Parallels like lambs. بيوازي مثل حملان الغنم. And so again, you see this parallel of thought. فمرة ثانية بنشوف توازي الأفكار. It's not sound rhyme, it's thought rhyme. Phil Lege says that as a young believer, he would read the Psalms and other poetic verses of Scripture. And he realized they didn't rhyme. None of them rhymed. Of course, he understood that not all poetry does rhyme. But often it does. Some kind of rhyme and sound. And then he thought, oh, it's because it's translated from Hebrew. Therefore, the rhyme sound has been lost in translation. But actually, that's not the way Hebrew poetry works. It works through thought rhyme rather than sound rhyme.
So in one sense, the rhyme is translatable. فبالتالي كأننا نقدر نترجم السجع لأنه هو عبارة عن فكرة. As we can see here. وإحنا نشوف دوت في المزمور اللي إحنا قلناه دلوقتي. Here's another example of synonymous parallelism from Psalm 2, verse 3. Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. Notice the balanced structure of the two verses with the repetition of meaning in the second verse. Burst and cast. Cords and bonds, and asunder, paired with away from us. Okay, we've talked about the first type of semantic parallelism. Out of the three identified by Bishop Love. And this first one has been called synonymous parallelism. So let's move on to the second type of semantic parallelism. The second type identified by Bishop Love is called antithetic parallelism. So this is where the two portions of the verse do not repeat each other. But stand in contrast. Often the second line is a negative statement with relationship to the first line. Usually, but not always, the second line begins with the word but. You'll particularly see this in Proverbs. So, an example is Proverbs 15, verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But... A harsh word stirs up anger. So you can see there's a deliberate semantic parallelism there. But this time it's a contrast rather than a repetition of thought. Another example is Proverbs 10 verse 1. A wise child makes a glad father. But a foolish child is a mother's grief. Sometimes antithetic and synonymous parallelism are combined. As you would expect in a particular art form like this. وزي ما احنا بنتوقع في النوع ده من انواع الفنون. Here in Isaiah 1 verse 3 في اشعيا 1 عدد 3 we have two synonymous couplets بنشوف زي ثنائي متشابه but in relation to one another they're antithetic. زي اثنين من التوازي المتشابه لكن الاثنين مختلفين او متناقضين. The ox knows its owner, and the ass its master's crib. This is a perfectly balanced synonymous couplet. Then moving on, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Again, a perfectly balanced synonymous couplet. But in relationship to one another, they are antithetic. The third kind of semantic parallelism 
of the three identified by Bishop Lowe is what he called synthetic parallelism. Or some call it formal parallelism. This is where the corresponding terms do not line up neatly. And the second line is a continuation and completion of the first line. So no part of the first line is repeated. The two lines often express complementary truths. So the two lines are parallel in form, but not in content. So they continue this 3 plus 3, or the 3 plus 2 form, of three Hebrew words and three Hebrew words, or three Hebrew words and two Hebrew words. The second line in this case advances the thought of the first line. Here's an example from Psalm 1 verse 2. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law they meditate day and night. Psalm 23 has many examples of formal or synthetic parallelism couplets. Here's a familiar example from Psalm 23 verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Notice how these two lines do have a formal relationship. This is, this is identified by rhythm or line length. Notice from the slashes the 3 plus 3 that we mentioned earlier. But the first line is not repeated in the second. It is continued in the second. Other examples of synthetic parallelism continue even into the third line. Again, from Psalm 51, verse 13, we see that rather than repeating the first line, the second line is a continuation of the first line. It completes it. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. And from Psalm 103, verse 13, As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. The synthetic parallelism is found here in the 3 plus 3 balanced verses. With the second verse, a continuation or completion rather than a repetition. So the repetition would be like synonymous parallelism. The opposite would be antithetic parallelism. But because this second verse is a continuation or completion of the first verse, this is synthetic parallelism. 
So as we conclude this session on semantic parallelism, let's review. واحنا بنختم مع بعض المحاضره اللي بنتكلم عن التوازن اللفظي عايزين نراجع اللي احنا درسناه. The three forms of semantic parallelism we discussed today. إنه التوازي اللفظي في ثلاث أشكال إحنا درسناها. Introduced by Bishop Robert Loth in 1753. قدمها لنا الأسقف روبرت روث سنة 1753. Are synonymous parallelism. وهم عبارة عن التوازي متشابه. Antithetic parallelism. توازي متناقض. And synthetic parallelism. والتوازي مركب. Synonymous parallelism has the second line of a poetic verse repeating the thought of the first line. Just in different words. Antithetic parallelism has the second line as a negative statement. It often begins with the word but and contrasts with the first statement. فكرة متباينة مختلفة عن الفكرة الأولى. And synthetic parallelism has the second line completing and expanding the thought of the first line. والتوازي المركب هو بنلاقي إن السطر الثاني بيكمل الفكرة الموجودة في السطر الأول. Rather than directly repeating it. مش تكرار مباشر. Here again is the outline of our journey through Hebrew poetry and psalms. مرة تانية هنا قدامكم الأفكار المختلفة للمحاضرات اللي احنا نقدمها مع بعض. This has been the third of 13 fairly brief sessions. احنا دلوقتي في الجزء احنا خلصنا المحاضرة رقم ثلاثة اللي من سلسلة محاضرات 13 محاضرة مختصرة عن سفر المزامير. Thank you for investing your time to learn about these three types of semantic parallelism. شكراً علشان استثمرت وقتك وسمعت معنا المحاضرة اللي بتتكلم عن التوازي اللفظي. And please join us for our next session. من فضلك اسمع معنا المحاضرة اللي جاية. When we celebrate our next category of parallelism. وهنكون فيها بنشرح الجزء الثاني ال ال القسم الثاني ال في التوازي. Chiasm and chiasmic parallelism. اللي هو الانعكاس أو التوازي الانعكاسي.